Today's topic is non-Newtonian fluid. Well, before we continue, we must first review what is a Newtonian fluid. A Newtonian fluid is a type of fluid which satisfies the Newton's law of viscosity. That is, the shear stress equals the viscosity times the rate of shear strain. We can plot a graph of this kind of fluid, and its viscosity would just be the slope of the straight line. A non-Newtonian fluid, on the other hand, is when the relation between the shear stress and the rate of shear strain is non-linear. There are generally four types of non-Newtonian fluids. Two of them are time-independent, and two of them are time-dependent. Shear thinning fluid is perhaps the most widely encountered type of time-independent non-Newtonian fluid in engineering practice. It is characterized by an apparent viscosity gradually decreases with the increasing shear rate. The most commonly seen shear thinning fluid is the ketchup. People like to invert the ketchup bottle and shake it for a few times before getting the ketchup out of the bottle. This is because the increase in shear rate will decrease the viscosity of the ketchup so that it will flow more rapidly. It's not flowing! <laughs> Come on! Shear thickening non-Newtonian fluid shows an increase in viscosity with the increase in shear rate. A common example of this kind of fluid is when you mix water with cornstarch. Its property can be shown through an experiment. Here's a glass of cornstarch which has been well mixed with water. Now let's take a spoon and insert it into the fluid. If we slowly withdraw the spoon from the fluid, it will come out slowly. But when we try to withdraw it in a fast speed, the whole glass might jump up with the spoon as if it is a solid. Thixotropic and rheopectic are time-dependent non-Newtonian fluids. The viscosity of thixotropic fluid decreases with the duration of shearing when it is sheared at a constant rate. The viscosity of rheopectic fluid, however, increases with the time of shearing. Honey is a common thixotropic fluid. When we add some honey into a cup of water, the longer we blend it, the better it mixes with water. This is because its viscosity has decreased with the duration of shearing. Cream is a rheopectic non-Newtonian fluid. It gets thicker after you blend it for a long time. This is because its viscosity increases with the duration of shearing. Non-Newtonian fluid can be applied in the avalanche model. Before I talk about this model, we first need to identify the probability of snow and understand what dew stress is. Snow has the probability to rest with a finite depth, which means a yield value occurs when the deformation of snow becomes small. And consequently, the snow comes to a rest with a non-zero shear stress. In order to begin a deformation, a yield stress, which is also referred to the threshold stress, has to be overcome. For example, if the shear stress is great enough to overcome the yield stress, then the snow behaves like a low viscosity fluid. Then we can see the snow is flowing. In contrast, if the shear stress applied on the snow does not exceed the yield stress, then the snow is at rest, or more precisely, it is slowing down very slowly. Although the stress is not constant in the whole body, some portion can flow while others will still behave like solids. So this is the main probability of shear thinning fluid, and this will be used in analyzing the avalanche. We encounter non-Newtonian properties when analyzing flow behavior of sludge in wastewater treatment facilities. In the activated sludge system, the sludge accumulated has non-Newtonian behavior. The composition of sludge is not consistent. Contents in the sludge will contain various amounts of minerals, microorganisms, and organic compounds. The flow properties of sludge depends on the shape and size of particles, degree of particle dispersion, solid content, chemical composition, and how the particles react to each other. 
The main parameter of flow behavior is viscosity of sludge. Depending on the system, the composition of sludge will change before it, it is disposed. Both anaerobic and aerobic digestion changes the sludge viscosity. For example, anaerobic digestion of sludge will lead to production of methane. The fermentation of methane causes the viscosity to decrease. It also decreases the amount of sludge formed but increases the concentration of dry matter. For sludge to travel through the pipes of the wastewater system, pumps are used to assist the transportation of sludge. The pump must account for the thixotropic behavior of sludge. For efficient fermentation, the system must have optimal mixing condition inside the fermentation reactor. Understanding the non-Newtonian properties will allow a setup of appropriate mixer.